The California recall election is less than two months away. And with 46 candidates such as Kevin Kiley, Larry Elder, Major Williams as a writing candidate, Kevin Pathraff, or as most know him, Meet Kevin, who's the best choice? Let's talk about it. I don't even live in California, and chances are that a lot of people watching this don't live in California either. Of course, if you know people in Cali, you could share this video with them. I'm just saying. So why does it matter? For one, California is the largest state by population in the U.S. For another, because of its high visibility, it's very influential for the rest of the country. In fact, right now, California has instituted new vaccine regulations and restrictions that will likely spread elsewhere. So in this video, we're going to talk about some of the candidates and some of their plans for California, who I, what I like, what I don't like, the upcoming August 4th debate, who's going to be there, who's not, and make sure to stay tuned to the end of the video because I'm going to talk about who, if anyone, I'm rooting for. First of all, let's talk about how this recall works. There are people who are out there on social media saying that, oh, we need to all consolidate behind one candidate because we're going to split the vote and Gavin Newsom will win. And anybody that's saying this needs to be ignored. Why? Because they're either just that politically ignorant or they're lying to you. You see, the simple fact is the recall consists of two questions, two questions. The first question is, should Gavin Newsom be recalled. In other words, should Gavin Newsom be replaced? So we got, there could be a thousand candidates. And if enough people want Gavin Newsom replaced, they can, you can have all of the voters split amongst all of these thousand candidates. But if everybody says, Hey, we want Ga Gavin gone, Gavin's gone. And then the question is the second question, who's replacing him? So regardless of how many candidates there are, it's the field. The first question is the field versus Gavin. If the answer to the first question is yes, to recall him, he's out. And now we look at who amongst the field is going to be the next governor of California. That's it's that simple. So we'll be talking about Gavin Newsom and we'll be talking about Kevin Kiley, Jeff Hewitt, Larry Elder, Major Williams, and Kevin Pathraff. Gavin Newsom is the current governor of California and he's under a lot of fire. Why? Well, a lot of it has to do with the way California has suffered as a result of this pandemic. One of the things is since January 21st, 2020, California has had the highest death toll of any country in the nation. And it's not like it was open, wide open and unrestrictive. In addition to having the highest death toll, it was one of the most restrictive, the most restricted uh, states in the country. Not only has California suffered because of the death toll, because of the disease, economically, it's gone through hell. Additionally, you have the way that Gavin Newsom has treated the rules that he's enacted. Getting caught at the French Laundry. You may say, hey, he's got to wash his clothes somehow. That's not what the French Laundry is. The French Laundry is a revy, high priced, expensive, ritzy, exclusive restaurant that he was caught at during the lockdown with his friends and lobbyists without mask. And pictures circulated, pictures got out and people realized how much of a hypocrite Gavin Newsom is. Clearly, that didn't help his case. You have Kevin Kiley, who is a member of the California State Assembly. He's a Republican, and according to some of the things I've heard about him, I've started to take note. Kira Davis, who is the editor at large for Red State, is one of the individuals who has been singing his praises since he jumped into the race. And as somebody who lives in California, I take notice of the fact that she's been there to witness who's on the ground, who's doing work, and who's actually been active in resisting a lot of the stupid stuff that people like Gavin Newsom are doing. Including, I've noticed that he, Kevin Kiley, is a outspoken opponent of AB5. AB5 is a bill that turned 
contractors, independent contractors into employees. And it was touted as a great thing for people, for the, for the former, soon to be former contractors who would then become employees. And it was an abysmal failure. It sucked. It is an abysmal failure. So much so that they had to change the law to start carving out exemptions because so many people were suffering under it. So in order to keep it going, they just started carving out exemptions for, you know, their special interests, people that donated to them, presumably. And but it continues to wreak havoc on those who weren't exempted for, from it. Let's take a look at Kylie's website. OK, so you have Kylie's website. And, you know, it has the about section, the blog, the roadmap. Then, of course, you've got, you know, yard signs. So now if you look here, this is where it's talking about him. And this is pertinent because he's a current politician. He's a sitting politician. So you need to know who he is, what he's done. But the most important part, um, the blog is a nice touch because you get to see him, what he's done so far. But the roadmap talks about what his plans are for um, you know, just very general ideas for going forward. And that's something that's, that's at least you have some idea of where he's going. Larry Elder is a conservative talk show radio host. He is, in fact, you could consider him the godfather of conservative Inc. Another way to put it, he was spouting anti-black talking points when Candace Owens was in diapers. He's the OG. Originally, he was kept off of the ballot, not considered an official candidate, but he sued the Secretary of State and he actually won. How he won was they were using his, they were claiming that he improperly filed his tax returns and released his tax returns. So that was why they were going to keep him off the ballot. But the court ruled that the tax returns shouldn't have even been used and requested for the special election. It stated that the, the, Tax returns only were supposed to be used for primary elections. That's how the law was passed. The law was not supposed to apply to special elections, which is what the recall election is being considered or equated to. Let's take a look at his website. OK, so now you take a look at his website. He's got the bio vision and the news and the bio tells you it's like I think it's like lifted off his book. Um, it's the same bio he has on his books his vision he's talking about why he's in the race why he wants to run uh, but the interesting thing is about the news section it's all the clips of him in media so he's petitioning positioning himself as a candidate an outsider but media is giving him all of this press all over the media he's getting all this press meanwhile back at his vision he's this is like a lot of platitudes are here a lot of bashing uh newsom like there, there's more about newsom and you know he talks about his father who's a world war ii vet so like he's it's a lot of fluff it's a lot of fluff but that's what larry elder is that's what larry elder does he knows how to to just he's a showman i'll give him that he's a talented showman but there's a there's just almost all fluff here and nothing tangible about what he's going to do what policies he's going to support and that's why i think he's just a really horrible candidate Jeff Hewitt is the libertarian candidate. He's saying that his ideas, his solutions are centered around innovation. Let's take a look at his website. Jeff Hewitt has his about section, his volunteer section, contact and donate. So you've got to have people able to volunteer, contact and donate. But the problem is the only thing he has on why you should vote for him is in his about section and it's very scant it's 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 like like one page to one pager and there's almost nothing there to tell people why they should be voting for him then we have major williams major williams has been running for quite some time however he will not be on the recall ballot which he has explained was a problem with a staffer who didn't file paperwork on time and actually wound up getting his campaign accounts closed so amongst that uh, behind the scenes turmoil, he's not going to be on the ballot, but he is still running as a write-in candidate. He's been backed and supported by individuals like Maj Touré, the founder of Black Guns Matter. And after you look at his website and see his stance on the Second Amendment, I get why Maj likes him. He was actually running before the recall election even began. So I'm guessing it's likely that he will continue to run until the 2022 
official gubernatorial election is held. Let's take a look at his website. So the very first thing I notice is this is a very cool. The way the website is set up is very cool. Um, and I know that's not, uh, I mean, it's visually, visually it, it's appealing. So, but that's not the, the point, but it is very well set up. But the really great thing about this is how much information is there. Um, and he's got it visually set up. So it's, it's, it's easy to navigate. He, he's got his policy section. He's got about him. Um, he's got his plans for Cal California is his offense calendar. Uh, how people can get involved. He's got the don't like, yeah, he's been doing this for a while. So that stuff is well set up. So, you know, his academic achievements, his low, his, his history about himself. Um, you got, you know, the, um, he's a family man. So these are, you know, just like checking off regular boxes that you got to do in a campaign, um, traditional boxes to, to reach the voters, to, to connect with the voters. Uh, but like, my thing is, I really want to see policy. What are you going to do? So he's got this plan to restore California. He's he's talking about taxes. He's talking about the budget. He's talking about the homeless crisis. And so this is what's crucial. You need to address the issues that are going to affect people's lives, especially as the governor. You're like the one of the most powerful people in the country. If you're a governor of a, of a state, especially a big state like California, you have so much power over people's lives and you need to be telling them how you're going to improve their lives. So he's talking about the, the problem with the budget so far. Um, and how spending needs to be ad adjusted and, and addressed. Um, he's talking about auditing the government, uh, reforming police reform. So now he is talking about things to connect the community to the police. Uh, he's also talking about, you know, uh, energy because right now, um, energy and climate change is a very significant issue and it's a very significant issue especially considering how blue california is it's going to be a a major issue and just how um how much it's affected um and you know so he, he he's he's talking about all of these issues and if you see uh he's also got ab5 and second amendment so ab5 i talked about is that bill the independent contractor bill uh so he actually addresses it which is great because that's something that did something significant in california and they want to export it nationally and of course his second Am amendment stances um is something that i know why Maj Torre likes him kevin pathrath is a real estate and finance youtuber who's been running for quite some time now in fact as a YouTuber, it's interesting to note that at least one article is seeming to imply that he is running, not as a serious candidate, but in order to boost his real estate, his YouTube brand. They're using the evidence that they're using to support this is that he wanted to use his name, his channel's name, Meet Kevin, on the ballot. Now, they didn't interpret that to mean that he wanted to use his popularity as a YouTuber to help his campaign, they somehow decided that it went the other way, which doesn't seem to make a whole lot of sense. Because when you're running for office, especially if you're not being supported by major media, you need publicity and all the publicity you can get for your campaign, which is what it seems like he was attempting to do in having his channel name as appear on the ballot so that people that are familiar with his channel could support him as a gubernatorial candidate. He actually has a 20 point plan and he has issues. He's addressing issues such as education and taxes on his website, which we're going to take a look at now. And so now the very first thing he has is vote yes on the recall. So he's letting you know how the recall works first and foremost which is great this is awesome because a lot of people don't understand it and like that's not a knock on to regular people but people need to know how this is working 
and how they can support it because um regardless of who they like they need to know boom this is what you need to do in order to um vote for somebody that you like you can't vote no on the recall and then yes for kevin pathraff then he has his um his one year plan so this first he has an actual 20 point plan and his first points that he has outlined are going to be implemented within a year um and it's it's not just that they are it's what they are so addressing crime ad addressing um this education like these are some serious things that he has planned and look at how detailed they are there is the, the level of detail that he has in this is, is is impressive so addressing affordable housing and i i know uh i have libertarian friends who would absolutely love this upzoning you know build more um and you know b better roads like he has his his one year priorities then he has his five year priorities and that one right there the elimination of the state income tax oh wow like that he had me at no taxation um so of course legalizing um gambling it makes sense stop with the regulations and then his stance on covid lockdowns like no he is opposed to them he's not doing them and he won't uh he won't use them so he's talking about um, increasing pay, um, addressing fire prevention as opposed to just responding, reacting after fires start. Um, so the handy man, a handy person economy, um, and then his day one executive actions. What he's going to do, like what he says he's going to do for homeless, is uh, homelessness is a really bold idea. But that's what I'm saying. This guy has some very detailed plans some very bold plans, some revolutionary plans, and that's what makes this very interesting. And he has an app. That's the thing that's really impressive is how much detail he has put in, how much plans he has, and how he's giving people an actual articulable reason why you should be voting for him. What I don't like, Gavin Newsom. Gavin Newsom or his authoritarian policies, his rest the restrictions that and the, the no regulation left behind because uh, it seems like there's never a restriction or a regulation that Gavin Newsom doesn't like and won't try to enforce. His entire approach to government and his reckless spending. What I really don't like, Larry Elder. To be blunt with you, what does he even stand for? I haven't liked him for well before the, the recall election and him running for uh, governor hasn't done anything to change my mind. In fact, just based upon the frivolity that I'm seeing coming from his mouth and the games he's playing, I like him even less now, if that was even possible. He's gone from a, making a career out of black man bad to running on a platform of white Democrat bad. Aside from the tingle up the leg, as Sonny Johnson would put it, that he gives his followers, what does he bring to the table? My answer is nothing. He brings nothing to the table. And also, I don't like Jeff Hewitt's website. I want to root for the Libertarian candidate. But when, you're, when your website has nothing, it has an about section, no policy, no platforms, no, no giving us no idea of what you're actually planning to do, how can people support that? I mean, if there was nobody else in the race, but if you have people that are actually promoting some good ideas, then maybe, you know, maybe you need to come up with something more than just, this is who I am. So. Jeff Hewitt may be a great guy, may be a great candidate. We have no way of knowing because his website is so devoid of information. What I like. Kevin Kiley has received some high praise for his actions and the stance he's taken against a lot of government overreach in California. I also like Major Williams' website. Nice website. Lots of information about what he stands for, what he's for, what he's against. I like it. I'm learning something. I look at his website and I learn something. And meet Kevin's website. Kevin Pathraff's website is chock full of information and he has a plan. So the August 4th debate is going to be happening next week and Larry Elder, who was previously supposed to be part of it, has backed out. Could it have anything to do with the fact that he's doing really well in the polls? Haha, <laughs> who, who would have thought it? 
but he's doing well in the polls and now he says that um oh i have a previous previously scheduled fundraiser at that time okay why bother providing any substance if you're just going to try to win on name recognition so the people that will be showing up kevin falconer john cox kevin kiley and doug ose those are the four invited right now they've invited newsom who's not showing up but kevin Pafrath has expressed interest in participating and i hope they do extend the invitation to him and have him there because like i said he's got some interesting ideas and i would like to see those ideas being hashed out in a debate against republicans so who am i rooting for well i would like to be rooting for the libertarian jeff hewitt but as i'm not familiar with him personally and his his website is just completely and utterly devoid of information i can't and i can't just support him because he has an l next to his name but that's why i'm rooting for the man with the plan kevin pathraff not only does he have a plan he has a plan that i like he has a plan that has similarities to things i would have done yes it's similarities to things that i did promote when i ran for office and i will promote when i run for office again if i went for office again <laughs> but from his plan to revolutionize education which is so sorely needed to getting the tax burden getting the government's hands out of your pockets he actually has some bold innovative ideas that don't involve government taking more control over our lives that's why i like kevin and the funny thing is he's running as a democrat the fact that he's running as a democrat makes me like wow i almost don't want to root for you but those ideas are so good i can't not root for you so i'm actually going to be doing a deeper dive into kevin pathraff's campaign because it's just that good the the ideas he's putting forward are just that good and it's not enough for me to just breeze over it in this um in this overview of the campaign but that will be coming soon and as always, don't forget to give me the thumbs up. Hit that thumbs up. Hit it now. Hit it. Come on. And subscribe if you haven't already. And if you disagree with what I said, if you don't like Kevin Pathraff, if you like Larry Elder and you're like, you're just a hater. Yes, I do hate Larry Elder's stupid ideas. Feel free to give me the thumbs down and state why in the comment section below. I'll see you next time.